thanks for, for dodging your, your morning meetings to come and listen to us chat about mentoring. Um, I wanted to... Uh, oh, slides. <laughs> um, this is the only slide that I'm, I'm delivering today, so if you want to get in touch with me, there's my detail. Um, most of what I'm going to talk about is, is my story and my uh, experience with mentoring and as a mentee and a mentor. Um, and it was quite, a, quite an interesting path. So I'm a salesman through and through, I always have been. Uh, unfortunately, I always will be. And the path of my career has been fairly accelerated because of having the support of great managers, mentors, uh, and a network around me. And I guess it started when I first became a sales manager. I applied for the role because I was a good salesperson. I thought I could be a sales manager. It was the next step up. Uh, and I was awful. I got the job and I was the worst manager there was. And all I'd imagined was it was carry on doing more of what I'd been good at previously. Uh, I had very, very uh, little experience on how to manage people, um, how to get the best out of them, how to motivate them. And it was a real painful process, and, and I ended up leaving that company by choice. It wasn't anyone else's choice, it was my own. Um, and moving into another business that did, did something similar, um, into a same role. But I, I took that particular job because of the leadership team in that company. So they were really, really encouraging. They focused a lot of time and effort in building me, and saw that I wasn't actually the finished article for that role. Uh, and that they probably got me a, a knockdown price um, and could build me up to do good things with the business. And, and actually, as time went on, I learned a lot. I was invested in. Um, and throughout the career, um, more and more imposter syndrome set in the higher up the ladder I got. Um, and I ended up working as a sales director for a conference company. So uh, this is now managing 28 people, uh, a lot of them graduates, a lot of them with very limited knowledge on sales. Um, and they needed me to give them a lot of guidance, so I could draw down on my experience and what I'd seen and what had been invested into me. Uh, and I worked for a guy called Tony Lloyd, and Tony Lloyd was a former teacher, uh, and he was the chief learning officer at this agency. Um, and he really understood how to light a fire under people's backsides. Um, and what I learned from him in just one year completely outstripped everything that I learned throughout my whole career prior to that. Um, and it was purely the way that he engaged me to do the learning on my own. He wasn't necessarily imparting the knowledge, he was just making sure that I knew where to go and look, um, what I should be considering, uh, and, and helping me with my own thought process. Uh, and so I got more comfortable in the role, um, and I eventually ended up starting up my own consultancy firm. Imposter syndrome strikes again, and uh, hopefully you will all uh, understand what imposter syndrome is, because actually everybody does go through it at some point, um, at, at all levels as well. Uh, and having a mentor helped me get over that. So being a mentee uh, has, I believe, played a huge role in accelerating my career. So now I'm um, being the CMO of a tech startup, um, which employs. 20 people with two offices in the States and one in Sunny Worthing. Um, and you know, that, that's quite a, quite a leap from where I started out as, a, as an innocent sales guy. Now, it got to the point where I was comfortable in my own skin and I understood that there was a value to add. And, and I think one of the, the things that really landed with me is as a mentor, you don't have to know everything. So your mentees shouldn't necessarily have one mentor. Um, so I focus on the commercial aspects of business, as an example, um, but somebody might want uh, to be a mentor in helping onboard new staff into their company, or how to go and build up a performance review program and get a, get a, a promotion. There are many different things that you can do as individuals to add value, uh, and I guess one of the areas of focus is, is how to do that. So. One of the um, mentorship schemes that I joined was the Prince's Trust. And the Prince's Trust, if you don't know, work very heavily with uh, young people and underprivileged people um, to help them improve their career prospects and also um, give them further education and opportunities in, in the world of work. Is, is some of the stuff I've probably done them no justice there. Um, 
And uh, the scheme that I joined there was uh, as, a, as an online mentor. So my background, as I said, is around um, sort of business coaching, sales training, uh, but a lot to do with career development and planning as well. So I signed up, uh, went through a vetting process, um, provided an online interview um, and was approved, and then went through a really, really stringent um, process of uh, being introduced to a mentee. Uh, and these, these individuals range from different ages uh, backgrounds and experience and all their motivations are very different. Some of them um, need to be really encouraged and cared for. And, and, and an area that I've not focused on before or had access to uh, was the fact that there is a very good feedback system to support uh, individuals that are either struggling mentally, physically, emotionally, um, and having to go through a lot of all this um, process in order to make sure that these, these young people were, were safe and looked after. So that was one of the strictest, uh, and rightfully so, processes as a mentor I've been through. Um, other, other ways of finding people to, to support, uh, I used a company called Cohort, uh, which unfortunately I don't think exists now, but this is around anybody being able to be matched with somebody looking for support in the public sector. So. I was matched with a, a young lady who worked for Bloodwise, which is a cancer, blood cancer charity. And she'd been pushed into a role, because no one else wanted to do it, to go and land partnership and investment from big city banks. Uh, so as a young, early 20s female with no experience in the big corporate world, she was in boardrooms with C-suites of banks. Uh, and having been in sales my whole life, when you go into a C-suite of these big corporations, it's still terrifying. So to do that with no experience at all, um, I had to take my hat off to her in the first instance. But we worked on um, just self-confidence in helping her understand that she was sitting across the table from a human being, not a job title, that actually the, the situation um, and the businesses that she was trying to approach may have uh, an understanding or a connection to somebody with a blood cancer illness um, and playing uh, the, the benefits of her charity into the hands of these companies. And she got over that fear um, because she was able to listen to somebody who wasn't training her, wasn't coaching her, was just asking her questions around what she liked doing, what she didn't like doing, what she felt she could add value. Uh, and she was the one that actually made the changes. It, it had very little to do with me, and I think as a, as a mentor, you're there to offer advice, challenge thinking, um, and be there as a sounding board above anything else. And she's done incredibly well, and since we stopped working together, um, and that was her decision, and again, nothing to do with my performance, um, she has gone on to receive two promotions within, um, within that business, so she's doing incredibly well. So there's two avenues um, I've mentioned around finding people to work with and mentor. Uh, another one, uh, and one that I still work with, is a young woman called Pippa Moyle, uh, who some of you may be aware of, who runs a group called the City Care Network. Um, and Pippa actually uh, applied for a job as a marketing manager when I worked at a digital agency down in Worthing. Um, and we kept in touch through that process. And I was at a Wired Sussex event. She came up to me and scolded me for not giving her the job. Um, and uh, we immediately hit it off and she was telling me about these exciting plans for what she was trying to do. Uh, and while her ideas were wild, they were adventurous, they were creative, they were new and exciting for me, there was a lot of gaps that, that she felt she had um, and she felt that she recognised an opportunity in talking to me that I might be able to support. So we don't have any contractual agreements, we don't have any regular diarised one-to-ones, it's just about being there to support her when she needs to draw down either on my experience or get my viewpoint um, or bring in some training that she's had to say, what do you think about this? And quite often we do this in a coffee shop um, and I'll set her some homework and I'll challenge her thinking um, and she is taking that on board um, and I'm seeing her less and less and less. This is a recurring thing I'm noticing. Um, but actually what she's doing is growing out this business. She's doing a lot of learning um, and draws down on me only when she needs to, rather than me forcing in these meetings. Um, now, everybody is different. Everybody will have their own skill sets that they want to impart. Uh, everybody will want to give back. And, and my 
Um, my view for giving back, or motivation for giving back, is that people gave so much to me, and I'm incredibly thankful and fortunate to be in the position that I am now because of those individuals. Um, I'm not doing this for a vanity play. I'm not doing this for a, if it wasn't for them. Um, I'm not interested in that. What I like seeing is those light bulb moments and seeing individuals succeed. So if it's about how you become a mentor, it's literally exploring your own network. Um, is that me? Doesn't matter. Um, I'm sure you all took a screenshot. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's about seeing that light bulb moment, it's about enablement and it, it's about really encouraging um, individuals that need your support. And, and as I said, it, it's, it's, as long as you are comfortable in your own skin about the subject matter that you think you can provide, um, even if you're not a trainer, if you've done it and you've been there and you've got some of the battle scars to say you've done it, then your advice is going to be worth something to somebody. It doesn't have to be as structured and as disciplined as a lot of people think, and it really is at your own time and leisure with the individuals that want to get the value out of you. So become a resource, define your proposition, uh, and put yourself out there. And, and LinkedIn is, is a great place to start, even those that are looking for career advice, people say they put their hand up on there looking for information, just reach out and say hello. There's nothing better than just finding a new face, giving them a bit of comfort in the fact that you want help. Because if we weren't helped in the first place, we probably wouldn't be sitting here today. So that's my very brief and whirlwind tour of my experience with mentoring. Thank you very much.